So zero down to th three, and uh, zero up to three. So now we've just reversed our bus and we've stuck it onto my cool signal. Now from here, what we're going to do is we're going to start playing around with it. We're going to create our decoder. And what's a decoder do? Well, in this case, uh, we have four bits coming in, and that's going to represent our traditional binary. So for instance, we have one, zero, zero, that equals eight. Um, say you have zero, one, one, zero, uh, that's going to be six, and so on and so forth. So uh, what, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to put only one value on the line. So for instance, if I have uh, 8 coming in here, I only want output 8 popping up. And in fact, I'm going to need a different way of writing this because I need output 0 uh, for standard logic here. Because we're going to have to have a 0 with output. Which means also that my counting is wrong there, and we only need out through 15. Okay. so. Now we're go going to think about when a 4-bit vector comes in here, we want to have only one of these little guys light up. So what we're going to have happen here is we need to start doing some comparisons. When do I care about things happening, and when can I assign them to the signal or to my output? So from here, what we're going to do is we've reversed our signal. Now let's start playing with it. Okay, so we can use the good old if statement. And give me just a second here to pull up my notes. Okay. So, if statement is pretty simple in Quartus, so we can just say if, excuse me, uh, you can use parentheses, you cannot, it's up to you, it's not going to care either way. Um, parentheses do tend to be a little bit nicer when you have compound statements, because they'll all evaluate nicely. So, let's say if uh, signal or my cool signal now since we have him um, representing uh, the correct order. So if my cool signal is equal to, and again we'll play with the hex numbers and we'll say uh, 0, 0, then I want something on my output. I want out 0 to be active. Okay, so out 0, or excuse me, out 0 is going to be 1. So we've turned him on. Okay. Else if my cool signal equals zero one, then excuse me. Ah. Ah, excuse me, I'm totally messed up today. Okay, so this would be zero because it's the zeroth bit, and this would be one because it's the first bit. Matching is a really cool skill that I obviously did not learn in grade school. Okay, so if it's uh if my cool signal is 1, then 1, and so on and so forth. So eventually we'll get to this guy right here. We'll say my cool signal, and we'll get to a cool value. So we'll say that it's, uh, let's see here, F. Actually, these are only going to be one wide because they're in hex. So remember how hex is four bits wide. So in this case, a hex of f means one, 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 one. Then I can just light up bit 15. So f out 15 is now one. One means that it's on, and we're good to go. And finally, um, at the end of an if statement, we have end if. As simple as that. So at that point, uh, assuming that you've written out everything, it will compile. Um, there's one thing you need to note about this situation right here. Um, you have not defined uh, these to, to be off when it changes. So if uh, everything in comes eval gets evaluated, uh, you may find behavior where out zero is always on after a zero happens. In order to prevent that, you would just put something in here elsewhere that just says, okay, so out zero is now a zero in this case. And you would need to do that for each one of the variables. Uh, a way to prevent that is to use signals again. So here, we're assigning, we're taking a look at my cool signal, and we're immediately assigning all of the outputs right here based off of that signal. That's good and all, but we can save ourselves a little bit of time, or uh, excuse me, a little bit of frustration by assigning the signals instead. So if I want to here, I could assign this to, say, my out signal instead. Uh, so my out signal, um, we'll say the zeroth bit because that's our zeroth position then he would equal one 
Okay, but the, how does that help solve the case of another input coming in? Okay, because like I said before, um, now the output zero is on, but that means that later on, that if something new comes in, that one's still going to be on. What if I want to turn it off? Well, okay, so before then, and it wants to format because I'm not playing good tonight, we can just initialize our out signal. So we'll just say out signal is assigned, is assigned hex of nothing. So th this makes our out signal blank. In other words, it is four bits of nothing that we can start playing around with. So here we've turned it on, and then it'll go through the rest of it. So let's say that we've done that. And instead we've used out signal to do all of our cool stuff. So here it is for one, here it is for 15. That's great, but out signal isn't connected to anywhere yet. That's kind of a problem, because it's just sitting there inside the component doing no good for us. So what we want to do is we'll end our process here, and we use the end process statement. And now we're back here inside of this block where, like I said before, anytime something happens within uh, the VHDL file, it just automatically gets executed inside of this block right here. So what we want to have happen is we want to assign our signal to our output. Pretty easy to do. So we'll take our out signal, and we will assign him, so we'll assign him to our uh, output. So we have that fun vector there called out all. And now he is everything that's on out signal. So once we've uh, figured out which pin that we want to assign to it, uh, we turn it on and then we assign him to output. That's pretty sweet. Um, if we want to assign it to individual outputs, we'll do it by doing something like this. Say I want the 15th. I can use out signal 15. And now I have taken a multiple bit vector, because this guy is 16 bits wide right here. I've taken just the top bit off of him, and I have assigned him to my 15th bit output. It's pretty sweet. So let's say that uh, we've gotten done through here with our if statement, though. The beauty of signals is that I can do more processing to them. So for instance, let's say that I have uh, some magic constant called magic constant. <laughs> He's, a he's the same kind of vector again. And he is 15 down to 0. And he is going to be... Again, this is all just for demonstration purposes. Uh, this isn't really building a interesting component that does anything right now. Um, you'll see what a decoder is in your lab, and uh, you'll see um, a little bit of how this can become useful as the course progresses. So for the time being here, what's, what you need to know about this is the process statement, the if statement, and then that you can assign signals outside of the process. Signals are very important. Okay, again, we're here inside the process statement. So we've figured out which bit is active um, based off of our, sig our if statement here. And now we want to do some more processing to our, our signal. So again, we can just do out signal is going to be out signal. And uh, we'll do an and, sure. And our magic constant. Pretty sweet, huh? So you can uh, play around with the same signal multiple times within a process statement, keep reassigning to it, and then finally kick it out at the end. So that'll come in real handy. Um, another statement that I would like to show you guys tonight is something called the case statement. This is, again, real similar to what you've seen uh, in any of your programming classes. So um, if we didn't want to use an if statement right there, uh, we could just use a case statement. So we would say uh, case. And again, we need to find the case of what? So uh, the case of my cool signal. Make this a little easier to read. Case my cool signal is. And then here we'll just define our cases. So when my cool signal is, say, uh, say it's a zero. Um, and then I give it this cool arrow right here, because Cordis is cool like that. And then I say what I want it to do. So in this case, I would want out zero to be active. So out zero is now one. 
And then in further cases, when I say I want it to be one, out one is now active. And I can switch this up to back to the binary again. So if I want it to be when it's 15, then I can say out 15 Oops. Ah, is now one. So on and so forth. There's uh, one case that you do need to know about that is absolutely essential to the case statement, though. It's called others. So when others, this is your big catch-all. And it's the important one. Um, so this is a good one to throw error conditions and things like that. Um, but it is required when you're doing a when statement. So in our case, we're not doing anything with it because we're going to account for all of the uh, potential cases. So we'll just say null. Then we've reached the end of our case. So we can say end case. So those are two ways to do it. You can look at it doing an if statement, which is really traditional to what you know, or you can look at it by using a case statement. And either way, both of those will work. When we get to the end of our block here, uh, we, we just say end, I didn't give this a name, so excuse me, architecture behavior of vector fun is. So now we just say end behavior because we're ending the block. And once we've done that, we're done. And assuming that everything has gone to plan, uh, this will compile, and you can just create a block and put it back onto your uh, BDF file right here and have it uh, go from there. Uh, this particular VHDL most likely won't compile, um, but I'll give it a shot. If you want to hang on to the lesson, feel free to. Otherwise, uh, that's all that I have for you tonight, and I hope that you've enjoyed watching. Okay, for those that have, you have, stu that have stuck around, uh, let's try to compile this and see if it'll let me do this. So we'll save that. We'll save my BDF. And it'll take just a little bit of time here to figure out everything. In fact, let me stop it because this is set up for a different um, yeah, a different board. So I will just start the analysis and synthesis and save everyone a load of time. Yep, again. So here um, it's just giving me lots of errors because I didn't specify is right there and it's probably expecting stuff in other places as well so again try to compile him and stick an arrow there And this is the joys of debugging. Welcome to the world of Cordis. So we can see here that standard logic is used, but it's not created as an error type. OK, this is my bad. Um, this is important, too. Um, standard logic needs to be a vector in this case, um, because it's using 3 down to 0. Uh, this is something that I did down here, so it's correct here, which is good on me, but not up here. <laughs> so we'll try again. And again, I've done it down here as well, because I am cool like that. So the moral lesson of tonight's story is don't put together lesson plans on the fly, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, so it has compiled, so we're happy. Uh, we can go to here and create a new symbol file form. That's going to make the pretty picture that we like to have when we want to plop it into the, the uh, block diagram. So we'll go here. It creates it up here in project. We go to vector fun, and wham! So there we go. That's everything in like we created earlier. And again, if we want to tie it up to the block, we just drag a line, and kablam! We're done. That's all there is to it. So again, thanks for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me through the course, and I will be happy to answer anything uh, that you guys may have. Uh, hopefully this hasn't been too terribly confusing, and uh, if you guys would uh, give me some feedback on what you like, what you don't like, I would greatly appreciate it, and uh, we can make the course better for you. So again, my name's Sean Hicks. Um, I'm a TA for the lab, and I'm here to help you guys out, so let me know if this is doing you any good, and thanks for listening.